Hello, for the common people, American poetry is Robert Frost. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. That is Robert Frost, born in 1874 and he died in 1963. First, we will see the historical and literary context, pay attention to his life, then his own theory of poetry. Then we will specifically analyze only one poem, The Road Not Taken, one of the most famous poems from Robert Frost, which is also the most misunderstood poem. We will see some parodic readings, which have come out of this poem, The Road Not Taken. And lastly, we will read stopping by words on a snowy evening just for pleasure. Robert Frost was writing against the background of the First World War, the Second World War, the American Depression. And in this period, we have the decline of Britain and the emergence of the US as a world power. The whole world was clouded by the Cold War between America and Russia. This was a world of misunderstanding, conflict, confusion. It was in this context Robert Frost was writing from New England. New England is an area of Connecticut, Miney, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island and Vermont. From here we have this modernist poet Robert Frost and many other modernist poems coming from London, Paris and Chicago. That takes us to the literary context. Frost began his career at a time of competing isms. L modernism is a major term, but there are many other terms like cubism, futurism, impressionism, imagism and many other isms. He visited England to build his own poetic career and published two of his volumes from England. One is a boy's well, another is north of Boston. When he returned to America, he found himself a famous poet and he was able to make friends with Edward Thomas, Ezra Pound and others in England. Frost was in the thick of modernism, but he differentiated himself from Eads, Pound, Eliot, Stevens, William Carlos Williams and many other poets. That is why a critic called Kern calls Frost a modernist poet with a difference. He was also new, but in the old fashioned way and endeared himself to readers across the world. There is no other American poet like Robert Frost who could touch the heart of every reader across the world, everywhere. Frost has his own theory of poetry. He has written some essays. This is one well-known essay, The Figure a Poem Makes. According to Frost, a poem begins in delight and ends in wisdom. Further, a poem is a momentary stay against confusion. Remember, we referred to the world of misunderstanding, confusion, conflict and everything. So, he wrote a poem to cater to the times of confusion. Let us read this quotation from his essay. Originality and initiative are what I ask for my country. For myself, the originality need be no more than the freshness of your poem. Run in the way I have described from delight to wisdom. The figure is the same as for love. Like a piece of ice on a hot stove, the poem must ride on its own melting. If you want to call it spontaneous overflow. Frost is not a British romantic poet, but an American modernist influenced romantic poet. We have chosen to focus on this poem, The Road Not Taken. It is a famous poem read by children in schools and colleges everywhere. But let us see how this poem can mean for us as students of poetry. Frost stayed in England during 1912 and 1915. At this time, Frost wrote this poem for his friend Edward Thomas. Both Frost and Thomas had this experience of walking around their place and they used to come across certain crossroads and at that time they would discuss which road to choose. And Thomas often felt sorry about the choice of roads because they could not choose both. And when Frost sent this poem to Thomas, he misunderstood it as a poem about decision making. Like Thomas, the friend of Frost, many readers 
throughout the world have continued to misunderstand this poem. Let us see the poem and then see how this misunderstanding has occurred and how we can have a better understanding of this poem. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps a better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear though as far that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the one less travelled by and that has made all the difference. Let me read it again. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveller. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as far that the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a word and I, I took the one less travelled by and that has made all the difference. We have highlighted some words which we will see next. We have some questions for discussion. What is the dominant feeling in the first stanza when the speaker faces a forked road, a road diverging into two paths? What logic of choice does the poet employ in the second stanza? One is not used very often so let me take that, that is a kind of logic that he uses. What is the difference between the two roads? Are they really different? What does the poet do? What does he know about the roads? What does he foresee in the future? Why does he use the word psi in the last stanza? Does the choice make any real difference though the poet claims that and that has made all the difference. Why is a yellow missing in the last stanza? That is why we had highlighted the first line two roads diverge in a yellow word and then in the last stanza that yellow word is missing. Why is it so? A larger question to consider is how does our living existing relate to our own knowing and doing? We are existing, we are living and we know something, we do something. How is our life related to this kind of situation that Frost presents to us? Philosophically, how do we resolve the conflict between ontology and epistemology that is living and knowing in our action that is praxis? Now let us see this thematic contrast, convergence and divergence, two roads diverge from convergence. Then we have straight roads, bent roads, fair and unfair paths. We also have better and worse claims, morning and evening, existing, knowing and doing, silence and sigh, faith and doubt, past and future in the present, similarity and difference. The last point, similarity and difference is very important because are the roads similar, are the roads different and what is the logic that the poet uses to make his choice. Now let us pay attention more to the theme of the poem. Convergence, when we converge does it mean we have more clarity? When it is a closed situation we have no option that means is it clear for us? Then when we come to the state of divergence do we have confusion? Does the open ended situation causes difficulty? In the whole poem we have this journey as a metaphor of life. Not only as a metaphor of life, we also have another one, labyrinth. This is another metaphor of life. So, this major metaphor of life called journey is not just a journey, it is a journey with a labyrinth. 
that means more difficulties in the form of forest, jungle where we have to make choices. So, we are presented with the conflict between free will and fate are we choosing the path ourselves or are we forced to choose some path because of something called fate. So, we have a very important question here can human beings choose and feel happy about the choices that they make in their own life. Do we have some control over our life or some does fate control us? Is it a picture of the critical moments in life? Do we tend to regret about whatever choices we make in our life? The poem seems to raise so many questions. It is for us as readers by interacting with the poem, interacting with our own self, with our own background experience, we have to come up with some kind of answers. All of us may not have similar answers, but some answers we have to arrive at which are convincing for ourselves. A number of poetic devices we can find in this poem, we mentioned this journey metaphor, metaphor as a journey of life he is the first one, then another metaphor we or symbol we have in the road, further we have the wood, the way all of them have something metaphorical, something symbolic in this context of the poem. Then we have assonance and consonance in one line, in the very first line, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, we have shown the assonance and consonance through the highlights, O sound represented by this assonance and then uh, the sound for consonants we have in this poem. Then a clear case of polysyndeton and anaphora we have in just one word and the whole poem is uh, interspersed with and, but we have mentioned only line number 2, 3 and 4. We have repetition of words like way and ages and then the syntax of this poem that is the sentence structure of this poem is notable because from the first line to the twelfth line we have just one sentence. The diction is just common all single syllable words, all common words that is why this poem appeals to us. Now, let us come to this rhyme rhythm and meter. A B A A B is a rhyme scheme of this poem. In the first stanza we have words like word, both, stood, could, growth forming this rhyme and we have underlined certain words also highlighted certain words we will pay attention to them. In the second stanza we have fair, claim, where, there, same, third stanza we have lay, black, day, way, back and then lastly we have psi, hence, I by difference. In the case of difference we have raised a question mark, hence difference when we combine these rhyming words in the last stanza, we even we can make a sentence like hence I sigh by difference. We can have some kind of meaning out of these two words hence difference, hence he chose a different path is that the kind of meaning that we have through this rhyming pattern that we have in this poem. It is for us to explore further into this poem, the rhythm is primarily iambic on the whole we have iambic tetrameter. So, let us see this stanza, two rows diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. The tone is ironic and the mood for some may be regretful and some they may consider it to be a clear choice. On the whole we have this overall impression about this poem. The speaker encounters a forked road in a word and reflects on the choice that he makes. By evaluating which road is less or more used, he decides to choose a less trodden road. In the end however, the speaker feels that there is not much of a difference between the roads or choices in our life though he claims and that has made all the difference. The metaphor of life as a journey with its twists and turns and the choices we make in our life pervade the whole poem. The poem leaves us with the impression that the act of choosing is more important than what exactly we choose. This is considered to be one of the most misunderstood poems in American literature. We have a critic called David R. who considers the poem to be the most misread poem in America. 
He says the road not taken means more than a poem as it is a cultural symbol for America. It is found everywhere. The poem is found everywhere but misunderstood to mean that the two parts in the poem differ. So, by bringing these two lines together in the second stanza, David R. tells us these two lines do not really differ. These two roads are almost the same though as far that passing there had won them really about the same. Interestingly, readers misidentify the poem even the title as the road less traveled. So, finally he concludes the poem is about two roads equally traveled not with much of a difference. We have many parodic readings of this poem. We have some examples in the pudding not taken, the lover not taken, the line not taken, the kitchen not taken, others do not have titles but are parodies. The success of Frost's poem lies in its parodic potential. Suppose an English teacher parodies his poem, how would it be like? Here is a version that I attempted. Two words diverged in a heated talk and sorry I could not speak both and be one speaker. Long I tried and looked into as deep as I could to where it showed in the dictionary. Then checked the other just as clear and having perhaps better claim because it was opaque and wanted cliche though as for that the meaning there had cliched really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in pages no finger had underlined. Oh, I left the first for another day yet knowing how word leads on to word I doubted if I should ever get back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two words diverged in a speech and I, I use the one less spoken by and that has made all the difference. Difference with a mark to indicate the kind of post structuralist language that we have today. We have stopping by words on a snowy evening, we have highlighted certain uh, points here yes, yes to indicate alliteration in the title ing, ing to indicate this internal rhyme in the poem and by snowy why we have clearly indicated some kind of importance is there in the title itself that is why we have paid attention to this. Then we have the rhyming words we begin with this question in this poem whose words it appears to be a false question and then we have identified the rhyming just we will read the poem just for the sake of reading. Whose words these are I think I know his house is in the village though he will not see me stopping here to watch his words fill up with snow. My little hearts must think it queer to stop without a farmer's near between the woods and frozen lake the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake the only other sounds a sweep of easy a wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely dark and deep but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. This is one of the most famous poems from American literature from Frost. Everyone loves this poem in fact we use this poem in our introductory uh, video that is why we want to have it again here. Hope you enjoy reading this poem and many other poems on your own. To give you a summary of this presentation on Robert Frost the road not taken we have seen the historical and literary context in which Robert Frost was writing his poem against the backdrop of this first world war, second world war, the great depression and the literary movements especially modernism. He came out with his own theory of poetry as a poem beginning in delight and ending in wisdom which we find in the road not taken and many of his poems we gave a linguistic and a rhetorical analysis of the poem and considered this poem from the angle of the most misunderstood poem from one critic David R. Then we attempted parodic readings of this poem we just gave the titles and then we presented an English teacher's parody of this poem and lastly we read stopping by words on a snowing evening just for pleasure we drew the attention of the listeners to the alliteration and the internal rhyme and the kind of vowel sounds we have in this poem to 
indicate the power of poetry that many poets have attempted through words, words, words in their poems. Words representing feelings, words touching the heart of human beings, that is what poetry is all about. We have some references, those of you who are interested, please go to some of these references and learn more about this poem and many others. Thank you.